All right. I think we have demons going. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. ah! Today, I was browsing around YouTube and I actually saw a video on steaming your beard. Now, I haven't really looked into it. Matter of fact, that was the first time that I actually saw something in regard to steaming a beard. Let's hear your opinions pertaining to steaming your beard. And go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. But yeah, I was definitely, I was caught off guard and at the same time I was intrigued about steaming a beard. All right, for those of you that follow this channel or for those of you that saw, we just discussed a yeard and gave our opinions pertaining to what a yeard is. But I decided that we should probably circle back to, I guess, pretty much how to grow a beard or, or tips for beginning your beard journey. Now, first things first, there are two primary factors pertaining to a beard and beard growth, and that's testosterone and that's genes. And just because you have a fair amount of testosterone, that doesn't guarantee a beard, and that's due to your genetic predisposition. Some of us are predisposed to having that great beard growth, and others, not so much. But, as I've discussed before, it's all about rocking what you have. Now, first things first, when it comes to actually growing a beard or starting your beard, just let it grow. And again, this is another thing that I've discussed before. It sounds a lot easier than it actually is because a couple weeks into it, we're looking at it, we're kind of stoked with it, we're kind of, others, we're, we're kind of not really where we want to be, it's patchy and whatnot, but there are going to be those awkward stages. Generally speaking, there will be awkward stages and the key thing to dealing with that is just letting it grow and pushing it through. And because when you do get to, let's say you prematurely start trimming your beard or trying to fix it, that's when mistakes happen and you end up shaving everything off. So we wanna kinda of stir away from doing that. Now the other thing is, Oh, well, I guess now going into trimming, I recommend waiting at least three months, maybe even longer before you do start trimming. And again, that's to prevent those potential mistakes from happening. Now, once you do get a fair amount of hair on your face, this is a, a good time to start, if you weren't already, shampooing and conditioning your stubble. Now, this is being proactive in the situation, to me, from my opinion and from my history with growing out a beard, I find that it helped prevent that dreaded itchy stage that a lot of people do deal with. I never dealt with that and I do think that was because of proper hydration, moisturizing and caring for the skin underneath the beard to kind of prevent that itchiness from even occurring. Uh, the other thing, and this is, I think this is more or less the fun part of having a beard and that's beard oil. Now. Beard oil, it's not only used for moisturizing your hair, your beard, but it's also used to moisturize your skin. And that's because our body, I mean, it generally doesn't produce enough oil to both cover your beard and skin at the same time. So that's when skin dryness and flaking can occur. So that's why using beard oil can definitely help with that. And again, Every, everyone is different when it comes to beard oil and either the dryness of your skin or the oiliness of your skin. So that's purely based on the individual. Now I say that the beard oil is a fun part because there are so many out there. And what I mean by so many out there, I mean in regards to the scents. I mean, you have your woodsy scents, you have your mint scents, floral, there's even a beard brand that has a campfire scent, which is absolutely amazing. And then you have s'mores and, and fruity stuff. So, I mean, there's a ton of options out there and it all depends on the mood, the day. Um, you Maybe the daytime you want a citrus scent, nighttime you want more of that kind of mature, smart, woodsy scent. A ton to choose from, so that is a great part about having a beard are all the options when it comes to 
beard oils, and the beard scents. Okay, now there are three things that are often overlooked, and this goes into your general overall health. That's nutrition, exercise, and sleep. Now, these things are very crucial to your overall health as well as, well as your beard health. And I, I say this, I speak from experience because let's, let's talk about the nutrition aspect of things. So I'm a competitive bodybuilder. I, I compete in men's physique. And um, there's some videos that talk about that. But nonetheless, when I do start prepping for a competition and I'm in a deficit and I'm lowering my body fat percentage to where I'm around that 3%, which is not healthy, but from a competitive bodybuilding standpoint, that's what you need to do in order to win. So I'm willing, this is purely my choice to do that in order to win. Everyone's different. And again, it's not healthy. But when I, now I say this because, let me get back to the topic at hand, when I am cutting and I am running that deficit for, let's see, let's say 12 weeks at a time, I do find that my beard becomes very frail and thin. So I do think that's a direct correlation with the kind of malnourishment and beard growth. And just like everything else, exercise and sleep are also crucial factors when it comes to your overall health and beard and hair health in general. Okay, now let's get into some additional tips after you have a fair amount of hair. One thing is uh, being proactive with the mustache. The mustache can be one of the most annoying things with having a beard. Gets in the way of food, gets in the way of drinks, and one thing that I've found helpful is being proactive and I pretty much you know what I subconsciously do this I split my mustache right in the middle and what that does is it helps train the mustache from going over your lip now there are some people that do have mustaches and they trim it um, right above the lip which is also another option and does help with that frustration with your mustache getting in the way of everything but I do like my mustache so my option, what I choose to do, is split it right above the lip. Continuing with the uh, nuance of having a mustache, straws. Straws definitely come into play. They come into help. My coffee's in the morning. I always use straws. Now, they don't have to be plastic straws. I know there's going to be some of you out there that are going to say, what about the turtles? Don't worry about the turtles. Um, there are metal straws in the house, so I do use those with my drinks for the most part. In all honesty, when I'm out in public, I don't necessarily use straws as much, and I kind of just endure the frustration of having froth on my mustache. Sometimes I'll use straws, sometimes I won't when I'm out in public, but I guess it all depends on the setting. Having a mustache and or a beard, it's messy. So be proactive in the situation when you are going out to eat. Let's say you're having chicken or ribs or lasagna, just grab a handful of napkins or, or have a handkerchief with you so that you can clean yourself up as you go on. I mean, messes will happen. That's just one of the things that comes about having a beard and or a mustache. Another tip I have for you is brush your teeth before you take a shower. Now, to this day, sometimes I still forget to brush my teeth before I take a shower. I don't know why, but I say this because after you take a shower and then you brush your teeth, you'll go on for a couple hours and then you'll you'll look in the mirror or somebody will tell you, hey, you have some white stuff on your lips or your, your mustache, and then you'll realize, oh, that's, that's toothpaste. So yes, brush your teeth before taking a shower. When it comes to styling your beard, uh, something, it goes into being proactive. Once you get out of the shower, towel dry your beard, and depending on how you are styling your beard, how you choose to style your beard, go ahead and do that after you towel dry. Again, that's being proactive and helping train your beard to do what it wants with me. When I get out of the shower, I towel dry my beard, and then I'll kind of poof it out with a brush. That way, my beard looks more full, and I choose to have a full beard because my face is long, and having that full beard kind of breaks up the longness of my face and makes it look more symmetrical. And now that's I get, that's my opinion pertaining to my beard. Some people like straight, long beards, to each their own. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much does it for my my tips and tricks, if you will, pertaining to 
beard growth, starting your beard, and some tips for when you do have a decent amount of facial hair. And another thing, I will be looking into steaming your beard. I'll, I'll look and see if in fact there are pros, benefits to steaming the beard, or if it's just some kind of gimmick. We'll see, that's to be determined. As always, I hope that you found this video helpful, perhaps intriguing. If you did, please go ahead and give this a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe if you aren't already. Till the next video, peace.